my channel. Um, thank you for joining me. And I can't wait to uh, take forward this interview. And the floor is yours. Please introduce yourself and let us know a bit about your background. Well, thank you for having me. My name is uh, Gilen. I am 27 years old and I live in Amsterdam with my fiance and my cat. Uh, he's a hairless cat, so he's not the prettiest, but he's very <laughs> cute. And um, I moved to Amsterdam two years ago. Before that, I lived in Leiden, and that's also where I did my bachelor's in uh, educational studies. Um, I did my master's for educational studies in Utrecht at Utrecht University. And three years ago, when COVID hit, I was still in my master's. I was living in Leiden and suddenly I had a lot of free time. And I think that all people can relate to a hobby or something that they started doing again within the first lockdown. Yeah. And for me, that was definitely cooking. Um, mm -hmm. I was also working at a cafe during that time to earn money for my mm -hmm. studies. Um, but we couldn't work because everything was closed. So then I decided, okay, I'm going to play cafe at home for my roommates, and for myself. And then I started sharing these things that I made uh, on Instagram. Uh, first, my personal one. And then uh, one day my roommate, I believe she asked me, do you, shouldn't you start your own like vegetarian, yes. vegan Instagram? So that's how I started. And um, it was the first time I had a public Instagram account. So before mm -hmm. that, it was always private. And suddenly people started following me from all over the world. And that's actually how we met as well, because I think you were, where were you at that time? I think I was in, uh, I was in Malaysia at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is crazy. Then three years later, yeah. we, still, uh, we still know each other. Yeah. So yeah, that's how I how I started, and now um well, there's a big time jump, but now this time of the or where we are now actually um I'm doing it full time since mm -hmm. this month. So before oh. this, I worked as an educational advisor, mm -hmm. uh, first five, then four, then three days a week, um but I still. Every time I switched up a little with working more for my own business and my personal mm -hmm. Instagram um, and working there for the university. And two months ago, I decided, okay, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to grab all the opportunities that I'm getting now with, the, with this page. So, and I'm really enjoying it up to now because I have a lot of yeah. extra time now to do everything that I wanted to do for a long time. So that's wonderful. So I remember, um, I remember I started following you when you had around 2000 and I had around 1000 followers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember I seeing uh, you uh, post photos of these vegan bowls that you would make smoothie bowls, I think. Oh, yeah. um, and I was like, oh, and then I actually did get inspired and I made a banana smoothie bowl myself uh, because it was uh, really popular. It was trending in that time. So yeah. I made one of those and I posted a photo of that as well. And yeah, I enjoyed eating it. Um, right. But it's so interesting to see how you've grown. Uh, you have 81.4K followers right now, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about that? Did you, obviously, I don't think anybody anticipates this, but you also have an e-cookbook. Um, and uh, yeah, how did all of that happen? And wh what was your reaction to receiving so much love online? Well, it is definitely a motivating thing to, to get. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't feel as different uh, as it did when I still had 1,000 followers. I think the, the personal connection you make with some people is very... Um, that is something that really motivates me, seeing other people making your recipes. Uh, but only the skill has grown. So now it's not like one person a week that makes my recipes, but it's multiple people a day sending me messages and pictures. But it's actually really nice and also very funny sometimes to read 
uh, what they have to say about certain vegetarian foods or things they mm -hmm. never tried before. Also some parents or grandparents being influenced and really liking vegetarian food, which is great. Um, and my cookbook, uh, it's a digital book. I had the idea already for a long, long time, but I didn't have the time to work on it um, mm -hmm. on a structural basis. But I think around, when was it? Uh, September or August last year, I switched from working four days a week to three, weeks a week, three days a week. And I said to myself, okay, that one extra day that I have is going to be fully dedicated to my online cookbook. So I stick to that. And also other spare time I had, I put really much like, pretty much all my free time into this book, um, thinking about the recipes and developing them. And also they're trying to teach myself how to do uh, the graphic designs and stuff mm -hmm. because I didn't know what I was doing at first. And I launched a book in December, the mm -hmm. December 1st, I think. Um, and it was actually a, a pinpoint for me from which I said, okay, uh, this is the, the first big step I'm going to take. And after this, if the audience likes it, then I'm just going to quit my job and see whatever happens. Yeah. And the responses were very good and people were really uh, enthusiastic about it. So it really motivated me to, yeah, mm -hmm. it really motivated me because it was a product from myself. Like I, created it I only had some help with uh, photography from one of my friends Nina she helped me but that was it so the rest was all me and to get this um or these lovely responses on it was very uh, was very nice amazing amazing yeah um where can you buy your ebook if anybody wants to buy it uh, you can buy it on my website and there's also a link in my bio in uh, okay my okay that's great to hear. Also, um, since we talk about veganism, how did you get into it? Or what do you remember your, did you, were you vegan all your life? Or how did that transition happen? And um, I'm not vegan, vegetarian. And mm -hmm. I've been a vegetarian since I okay, was born. Okay, vegetarian. Yes, yes. So my mom, she was a vegetarian from, um, well, and she was 18, I think, or mm -hmm. even younger. Mm -hmm. And during that time, uh, it was quite um, unknown to be vegetarian in Holland. Mm -hmm. And when she had me, she was 35, I think, and she decided to raise me fully vegetarian. So I actually never ate any meat or fish oh. ever. Yeah, and I... Well, of course, at some age, you develop your own um, will and you develop your own like wishes in what you want to do, what you don't want to do. But I never had the urge to try it as well. I think I'm very used to it. Um, and from a young age on, I was also very, uh, how do you say it? I, I, I felt very bad for all the animals and I just didn't get why people would eat mm -hmm. meat. So, yeah, actually, it was more my mom than me in making this decision. But I think me in the end that tried to continue with it. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, what about like uh, some people? I, re I read comments sometimes on vegetarian recipes or even vegan pages. Um, people say uh, that uh, people are concerned about where do people get enough protein from? Do you, do you get some such comments on your, uh, how do you like tackle them or? Yes, yeah, sometimes. I think 99% um, mm -hmm. uh, of the comments is very lovely and supportive. But when I do get these comments, I just comment with my um, height. So I say I'm 181 centimeters and I never ate meat or fish. And they never respond to me. But I think that's the, the biggest proof I have, like living proof that it doesn't harm you in any way to not eat meat or mm -hmm. uh, fish. 
Yeah. So I think this, yeah, I think this is one misconception about people, ha- the people have that it affects your health with yeah. plant-based diet. Yeah, and you do need to consider when you, for example, don't eat meat or fish. Uh, it's a general knowledge of um, you need mm-hmm. certain vitamins, you need certain proteins. Um, when you have a balanced diet, you will get these. And it doesn't matter if it's either plant-based or dairy-based or meat or fish-based as long as you get these nutrients that you need so Mm -hmm. I do consider my diet quite um, uh, sufficient so I eat everything you probably need and if I for example only start eating carrots and lettuce I will probably not grow this big as I am now so do you cook every day almost (laughs) Uh, I would say five, five days a week. Um, Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just cook during the day and I don't, um, or I can't finish everything. So I give it away. (laughs) And uh, my boyfriend also, he's a great cook. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually very pleased and happy when he cooks sometime. So it's not Okay. Um, we also go out for dinner uh, mm-hmm. quite often. So, and I think going out for dinner is also now, and it sounds really, really weird, but it's part of my job because it really inspires me. And I get so much inspiration from mm-hmm. not only cooking myself, but also trying other people's food. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but I'm in a kitchen a lot. Yes. So what exactly is that you do for the viewers to know uh, that you say that you do full time? um, This is my full time job. What is it exactly to give a brief? It's um, mostly recipe development for Mm -hmm. other companies and brands. So and it's mainly based on social media engagement. So Mm -hmm. because my page has grown quite big. brands are willing to cooperate or work with me Mm -hmm. Uh, and also doing this ebook also gives a big yeah well not a big but it gives a certain kind of income Um, Mm -hmm. but besides that I'm now just exploring all the options that I have because I don't want to do this full-time for long so I really want to see and try other things I've Mm -hmm. I've thought about doing cooking workshops maybe Mm -hmm. someday uh, catering jobs those types of things wow yeah nice yeah Yeah, I I saw a story yesterday it said coca forehead coca forehead birth house I don't know if I'm saying it right I'm gonna butcher the Dutch yes (laughs) So yeah. uh, what are you were wearing the veggie lane? Is that how you pronounce it? Veggie lane? Yes, veggie lane. Yeah. Veggie, lane yes. So, veggie lane. Okay. So the I read that you were wearing an apron. Uh, you were is that you were cooking for your neighborhood? What was it? Uh, well, it's um, and and we I discussed this with my Italian friend who was also there yesterday. There's not a real English translation for it, but it's okay. a, like a neighborhood community. Hey. house in which people can join every Tuesday um, and they pay a little fee so they pay around five to seven euros mm-hmm. and they get a dinner which is mainly cooked by the people that live in the neighborhood mm-hmm. uh, and my father-in-law he volunteers at the the beard house mm-hmm. uh, I will now call it beard house because there's no like good English word for it um, but he volunteers there and we were talking about it a few weeks ago and I was like oh I now I have time because I quit my yeah. job so that's something that I really wanted to do for a very long time uh, mm-hmm. so I signed up with my one of my best friends mm-hmm. and we made all the food it was like for around 20 people so we made mm-hmm. a, a main course and a dessert and it was really nice uh, because there wow. was a lot of like older people coming. There are people that are uh, all by themselves. So they're maybe a little bit lonely. Mm-hmm. And it's just a great place for other people to meet and interact. And of course, have good food. So, yeah. 
Yeah, and they also have, uh, they told me yesterday, they also have a children's cooking class on Mondays. So I'm really, really want to do that in the future as well. well. Yeah, that would be very cute because I love children. So I think that's the biggest luxury of having uh, mm -hmm. time off now or more time off that I can finally do things that I wanted to do for a long time. So for example, this is not something that you can earn money with, but yeah, um, it's something that I really enjoy doing. And I really want to balance those things out. So mm -hmm. not all about income. I'm like, if I have a, an income that pays my rent, I'm fine. And yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times, I mean, you would get partnerships or collabs in the, in the run. How do you even, how do you decide that, okay, this is someone I want to collab with or do a partnership with like brands, for instance? Are there, yeah, for, yeah, there are some brands that I don't uh, want to work with. Um, mm -hmm. It's usually based on some principles that I do. For example, if there's a, a factory that makes tuna, there's a lot of vegan tunas coming on the market now. But I'm like, no, I'm not going to work with you because 99% of everything you produce is fish. So mm -hmm. that's something that's not on my... Um, yeah, priority list. Mm -hmm. um, you do get uh, some, or actually a lot of companies that approach me and they're like, hey, uh, do you want to collab? This and this is our offer, but sometimes the offer is not uh, sustainable. For example, sometimes I get offered like a free cookie and I'm like, <laughs> and then they want three videos and four posts and I'm like, what? okay okay sorry cookie cannot pay my rent so i have to kindly reject those um but now i have more time i also started uh, approaching some companies that i really enjoy and i always use mm -hmm. uh, and i really hope that these will also yeah it makes it more natural to make content with products that i use on a daily basis yeah so, for example, uh, next week I have a collaboration with a, a kitchen tool brand uh, and I use their kitchen tools a lot. So I approach them and uh, yeah, it's it's nice because I'm I'm already enthusiastic before I even started it. So wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Yeah, you're looking out for opportunities wherever you can find them. It's nice yes. to hear. Yeah. yeah. What advice would you give to someone who is transitioning from a meaty diet to like vegetarian do you have something like advice or any helpful tips yeah i, I would say don't go cold turkey so don't mm -hmm. um go fully vegan while you were first eating meat or fish on a daily basis but start cutting out like small things for example start with one vegetarian meal a week for mm -hmm. dinner then maybe start with uh, breakfast. So try to exclude all kinds of uh, like meat or fish products from your breakfast and then et cetera, et cetera. Like build it up naturally. Don't go like some sort of sort of, sort of crash diet in which you mm -hmm. cannot have a lot of things all of the sudden. Yeah. yeah. That would be the and best advice I would probably give. Yeah. And how would you say, do you see the, like the future of plant-based industry in the near future? I think very commercial because you already see it right now in the supermarkets that the aisle with vegetarian and vegan products almost bigger than the regular like aisle. But I still think that there's a lot to learn, um, mm -hmm. especially outside of the bigger cities in Holland. When it comes to vegetarian food, like not everything has to be replaced. Um, mm -hmm. And that is some mindset that a lot of people have here. So, for example, we Dutch people, um, our cuisine is not the best, let's be honest. And people tend to think in the all known potatoes, vegetables mm -hmm. and meat. And then people would try to replace that meat with a vegan or vegetarian meat brand. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can also pick a vegetable and build a dish around this vegetable and you have a fully and completely satisfying meal. Yeah. Um, so I really hope that it's not only like the, 
the fake meat produce that will grow big, but also the mindset around food and eating with a lot of variety. And yeah, that is something that I would really hope for the future. Oh, yeah. Um, Because I also noticed on your Instagram, your food is so colorful. It's so it's so nice to see because you have all these different kind of sauces. You have the different kind. You you turn vegetables uh, into like like even the chickpeas. Like you air fry them, make them crispy, and uh, the hummus. You put some kind of sauce on top sometimes, or you even add the hummus tahini sauce to like a wrap. I see that on your videos, so it's very interesting to see. Uh, you you are Dutch because I I moved here and I saw that the Dutch food is pretty plain and it's mostly like fries with um, sauces like mayo or something and like those little balls of like croquettes kind of yeah. things yeah. also with some sauce yeah <laughs> so I see that uh, instead I see you you have this whole portfolio of different kind of sauces and even your on your Instagram you when you post stories you have these jars these ingredient jars so it's very inspiring to see how much of a lover of food you are as even a dutch Uh, no offense at all (laughs) thank you that's the biggest compliment uh, you can get you can give me (laughs) (laughs) yeah uh, so what would you say is your favorite ingredient or favorite ingredients to cook with oh that's difficult but i think (laughs) i like the basics i cannot live without for example just olive oil or butter, mm-hmm. garlic, those oh, types gosh. of ingredients. But I'm really into crispy chili oil, the mm-hmm. brand, uh, Ma, which is a, yeah. like a Chinese brand. I put it on everything, but it's kind of cheating because it has a lot of flavor. So it makes everything delicious. But yeah, um, yeah, just the, just the basics, lemon, fresh herbs. Yeah, those fresh herbs can make everything good also when you look at my fridge it's like always full but it's mainly because we have so many little jars and salsas and recycling yeah 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 (laughs) Yeah, i i noticed that not your fridge but like your (laughs) yeah well that's something i i tend to not show because people will probably go crazy like oh it's so messy (laughs) but maybe when i clean it one day i will show it yeah what about your favorite cuisines? Do you have any top three? Uh, oh, that's also difficult. Well, I think I would go with the ones that I um, added in my cookbook. My cookbook was built on to three chapters. So I did a Asian cuisine chapter, which is extremely broad. Like there is no type of, it's the same as you say, European cuisine. Mm-hmm. But for Dutch people, it's mainly focused on um, Indonesian regions, uh, also some Vietnamese and Chinese influences that I really mm-hmm. like. Um, I love the Indian cuisine. Mm-hmm. Um, and Italian cuisine is also one of my favorites. And the M- Middle Eastern Mediterranean oh, yeah. cuisines. Yeah, there's so many great foods. So, yeah. yeah <laughs> Dutch cuisine. Sorry, it didn't make the top three, but spoken like a true food lover <laughs> yeah <laughs> what about um like you do you make your own sauces also uh, sometimes. sometimes yeah sometimes. yeah i do for example we have the basics like mm-hmm. i don't make my own mayo or ketchup or mm-hmm. mustard um, it's a little too time consuming but for example when i make a, a fresh tzatziki i make it myself or a garlic sauce or uh I try to make, we're now a little into salsa making. So for example, roasting vegetables and then just blending them. And then you have this delicious tomato, uh, chili salsa. So yeah, we try to experiment a lot with uh, with salsas as well. Nice. And what do you think is one message, key message that you try to give your followers or people around you with your food? Um... Oh, that's a good question. I think just um, not—it's not in a message, but it's more an indirect message, which ha- which has nothing uh, has to be perfect. Like if you follow the recipe, 
and you watch the picture and you try to make it look like it, you will eat good food. Um, it doesn't matter if you miss one ingredient or you don't have the right oven temperature or anything. But just, yeah, do you... And I try to make my recipes a little uh, bit approachable to not make them too difficult. Uh, so I really hope that people will find joy in cooking because I mm -hmm. often find that recipes are a little bit difficult and people will try them, but they will fail and they will think, oh, I'm not a good cook. And I really hope that people will make my recipes and have the opposite. So they will be like, oh my gosh, I made this. Whoa, I can cook. So that is something that I, uh, I want to give them. Like everyone can cook good if it's just a simple recipe. Mm -hmm. Where would you say since... Yeah, that's a very good message that people are easily able to make recipes. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say, Do you where do you see yourself in five years? Oh, I really don't know. I really mm -hmm. hope that maybe within five years, I will have my own like physical book. Physical mm -hmm. book so not just a digital one, but also something you can go through like this, like real book. Um, but I mainly wish I'm still happy because I'm really happy with what I do now and I have a lot of joy and passion for what I do. Um, so I really hope that I will be that, yeah, still in within five years. Hopefully with a lot of cats and <laughs> yeah. How, how many cats do you have right now? We have one, yeah. Oh, okay. He's now awake, but he's now... Yeah, I did, quiet. I did see there were once two cats in your sweater. So I thought that you had two cats. Oh, yeah, those are the cats we babysit. So babysit, oh, okay. um, they're, they're for my friend. And when she's on holiday, they come to our place and we watch them. Yes, but this one is really ours. So he's not going away anymore. Okay. Yeah, we were thinking to buy another cat, but yeah, it's too much hair. Maybe get a sphinx cat. <laughs> yeah, cat. They, don't, they don't lose hair. It's really great. Did, did you notice any differences between the sphinx cats and the furry cats? Like, like let's say, habit-wise? Or do they have yeah, differences? Yeah, I think the sphinx cats' uh, personality is a lot friendlier. And they really mm. like to cuddle. But I think it has also to do with the fact that they're often very cold. So they just like to cuddle up against you because oh, you're warm. <laughs> uh, for example he's all, always in blankets and always like oh. they need something yeah but their character is very very nice sometimes uh the more furry cats are they look at you like what do you think you're doing when you for example try to pet them he's not like yes. that <laughs> yeah i think it's uh, not the best country for sphinx cats to exist in because they no, want to be no yeah but they can also burn from the sun so oh. that way it's it's actually it's quite okay uh, i didn't know that yeah yeah so, uh, they're weird <laughs> <laughs> okay so that was it for our interview yeah, would you like to say you. anything <laughs> no thank you for the interview it was great so yeah can't wait to see or read the results um thank you for joining me and i had a lot of fun talking to you it was very um it was a different interview about related to food because I also really enjoy yes. <laughs> everything around food, even though I stopped making food content. <laughs> but sometimes you do, right? But yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes. Um, yeah, I guess uni is keeping me very busy. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so me, but it's, your passion will never go away for food. So yeah, like sometimes I still cook food but I just don't make videos or sometimes I would just post it on my story like look I cooked or something but yeah recipe creation is also not that easy like putting everything together video editing and stuff so it takes yeah. a lot of time yeah yeah so yeah. kudos to you for doing it <laughs> for thank the last you, four, three four years <laughs> yeah thank you yeah well it's been a long time but no it was really uh really nice seeing you oh I get mm -hmm. a call I'm just go I have a watch now, so when I get a call, my watch also <laughs> rings. Yeah, oh, yeah. but um, no, it was really nice. And um, I yeah. wish you all the best of luck. It was great talking to you. Yeah, thank you. And so much. yeah, I wish you a very nice day.
Yeah, same to you. And hope hopefully we meet someday. I could cook Indian food for you. Uh, yes, palak, I would love palak that. Palak paneer or something. <laughs> oh, that's my favorite. Yeah. yeah vegetarian food. Okay, okay. see you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.